Schizoaffective disorder is one of the most misunderstood and misdiagnosed disorders in all of psychiatry. It's gotten to the point where I instantly distrust the diagnosis when I see it on a patient's chart and will start the diagnostic workup from scratch when talking with the patient. And that's not just my experience either. Studies have shown that only one-third of patients diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder during a first hospitalization still have the diagnosis six months later, compared to over 90% for schizophrenia or 80% for bipolar disorder. Another study found that when a group of patients with a diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder were re-evaluated in a systematic way, exactly none of them were found to actually meet criteria for the disorder. So why are we so bad at diagnosing schizoaffective disorder? These incorrect diagnoses often stem from improper history taking and a knee-jerk tendency to assume that any patient with both psychotic and mood symptoms has schizoaffective disorder. This is important enough that it bears underlining. Mood and psychotic symptoms that appear together in the same patient is not automatically schizoaffective disorder. Whenever you encounter the word schizoaffective disorder, I want you to replace it with schizodetective disorder. This serves two purposes. First, it will remind you that when you see this diagnosis or are thinking about diagnosing it, you should make sure to take the time to do some detective work and verify that it's actually what's going on. Second, it will help you to link to the mnemonic for the diagnostic criteria that we will introduce shortly. Before moving forward, let's take a step back to look at what exactly is schizoaffective disorder and where it came from. Traditionally, the field of psychiatry made a distinction between psychotic disorders like schizophrenia and mood disorders like depression or bipolar, as these were thought to be entirely separate and distinct processes with different prognoses and treatments. As time went on, however, this split became harder to justify, as patients with depression and mania sometimes developed psychotic symptoms, while those with schizophrenia sometimes had mood changes. In addition, there seemed to be patients who clearly had mood episodes while also having discrete periods of psychosis. To address this gap, the diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder was created to describe people who, by all appearances, genuinely experienced both psychotic and affective symptoms. The specific criteria have changed over time, but let's look at how the DSM-5 currently defines it. The key with schizoaffective disorder is that both mood and psychosis need to have been present together for at least some period of time. However, psychotic symptoms also need to have occurred on their own without mood symptoms for some time as well. In addition, mood symptoms need to be present for the majority or over half the time after the patient first becomes ill. Finally, you need to make sure that the symptoms aren't attributable to substances or other medical conditions. Note that you can subtype schizoaffective disorder into either bipolar type for patients who have experienced manic episodes, as well as depressive type for patients who have experienced exclusively depressive episodes. You'll see that this is a much more nuanced definition than the simple mood plus psychosis equals schizoaffective disorder that many clinicians seem to be using. Let's see if we can piggyback onto the schizodetective mnemonic from earlier to keep these diagnostic criteria in mind. When you think of a detective, one of the first mental images that will come to mind are those classic detective hats. This image will help you to remember the four diagnostic criteria for schizoaffective disorder, specifically that half or more of the total time ill must be spent with mood symptoms, that psychotic symptoms must occur alone without mood symptoms, that mood and psychotic symptoms must occur together at the same time, and finally that you must rule out the effects of substances or other medical conditions. Now that we're armed with our schizodetective hats mnemonic, let's see if we can sleuth out some common culprits that are frequently misdiagnosed as schizoaffective disorder. In my experience, here are the usual suspects. First is a mood disorder with psychotic features. Both unipolar depression and bipolar disorder can present with psychotic features. The key here is that someone who has only ever had psychotic symptoms during a mood episode but has never had psychotic symptoms alone should not be diagnosed with schizoaffective disorder, as this violates the A criterion from HATS. Only when there is a clear history of psychosis alone in the absence of an abnormal mood state should the diagnosis of schizoaffective disorder be applied. Next is a substance-induced psychotic disorder. Several substances can cause psychotic symptoms, with methamphetamines and cannabis being commonly found. When either of these is in the picture, the S from the HATS criteria is not satisfied, and you should not diagnose schizoaffective disorder. While this seems really simple, clinicians still get it wrong a lot, so make sure to keep it in mind and consider screening for substance use during the interview and or ordering a urine drug screen. Let's move on to some more nuanced exceptions. 
First is schizophrenia itself. If you watched my videos on both depression and schizophrenia, you'll notice that some of the symptoms overlap between the two, with anhedonia being a prominent example. However, there are other findings that are commonly seen in both, including a constricted affect, social withdrawal, a decrease in activity and behavior, and even suicidal ideation or attempts. With so much overlap, clinicians will occasionally diagnose schizoaffective disorder depressive type when all of the supposed depressive symptoms can easily be accounted for by schizophrenia alone. For this reason, make sure that any mood symptoms are clearly in excess of what would be seen from schizophrenia itself before bumping up the diagnosis to schizoaffective disorder, such as a patient reporting a distinctly depressed mood or having negative ruminative thoughts of hopelessness or guilt. Another nuanced misdiagnosis is bipolar disorder, even the vanilla variety without psychotic features. This is because the grandiosity seen in mania can reach the level of a delusion, while the flight of ideas can become severe enough to resemble thought disorganization. On the other hand, the delusions seen in schizophrenia can sometimes feel like grandiosity, especially if the patient has ideas of reference or feels that they are being communicated with specifically for some grand purpose. In addition, someone with delusions related to schizophrenia may begin engaging in goal-directed behavior, such as preparing to overthrow the government due to paranoid delusions about the FBI or CIA. The fact of the matter is that it can be hard to tell the difference between bipolar grandiosity and schizophrenic delusions, especially early on in the illness. In these cases, I encourage people to take a time-will-tell approach, as the passage of time will often see either mood or psychotic symptoms become more prominent. Luckily, the same treatments work for both mania and psychosis, so you can take advantage of this to buy yourself more time to evaluate while still treating the patient with the best standard of care. Finally, the last common culprit here is borderline personality disorder. If you look at the diagnostic criteria for BPD, you'll notice that unstable emotions and paranoid symptoms are both present. In fact, the reason that this disorder is even called borderline in the first place is because it was considered to be at the border between psychotic disorders like schizophrenia and neurotic disorders like depression, with 25 to 50% of patients reporting psychotic symptoms and almost all patients reporting unstable emotions. So it's easy to see how symptoms could be considered to fit the mood plus psychosis mold that many people lump schizoaffective disorder into. However, both the mood and psychotic symptoms seen in this disorder are very different than what is seen in schizoaffective disorder. The affective instability seen in BPD involves emotions that shift rapidly from minute to minute or hour to hour, versus the weeks or months long changes seen in mood disorders like schizoaffective disorder. For the psychosis-like symptoms in BPD, these tend to be very different from those reported by patients with schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder and are much more transient, stress-related, and vague rather than the consistent and clear, complex delusional belief systems seen in psychosis. Auditory hallucinations, if they are present, also don't fit the usual pattern, with patients being much more likely to describe them as coming from inside their head or as being vague or unclear as to what they're saying. We'll dive more into borderline personality disorder in a future video, but for now, just know that this is another possible explanation when mood and psychotic symptoms co-occur in the same patient. So what can you take away from this video? First, I want you to put on your detective hats when you encounter schizodetective disorder. Second, you can use the word hats itself to remember the diagnostic criteria for schizoaffective disorder as it's currently defined in the DSM. Finally, keep mood disorders with psychotic features substance use, schizophrenia itself, and borderline personality disorder on your differential when doing your detective work. And with that, let's go ahead and wrap up. This video was one of our first deep dives into the process of differential diagnosis, or how to tease apart different disorders that are often mistaken for each other. Doing a good differential is essential for coming up with the right diagnosis, and through that, being able to get patients to the right forms of treatment. If these complexities and nuances interest you, consider getting my book, Memorable Psychiatry, which has a section on differential diagnosis for every major diagnosis in psychiatry. Until next time, happy studying.